2018, everybody. We are going to make a fan guard today. That's the plan. So I got my dimensions off the, the thing that I'm making this around, which I'll show you afterwards because I think it's, it's interesting. Some of you might be interested. Um, so what we're going to do first is uh, I set up a model here, 6 inch by 6 inch, quarter inch thick material, center origin. Uh, I'm using Spire, you can use VCarve. Um, any of your software will probably work almost identical. We're just using vectors and uh, tool pathing. It's nothing complicated. No 3D, no, no, uh, nothing fancy today. So I know the outside of my part dimension um, is going to be 5.75. So I'm just going to create a circle there. Then I'm going to create a circle for the inside diameter of 5.33. And then I'm going to fill this thing full of holes because I need a lot of airflow through it. So we're going to put a couple more circles in here. Put one about there, I think. And one about there. Alright, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just put a circle of an approximate size that I like in the middle here. So that's our basic layout. Now we need to make a bunch of holes. So I'm just going to eyeball this circle. I don't want it to be right in the middle so I can find it later. And I want to make 12 of these circles around this circle. And to do that, I'm just going to select the circle and the circle I want it to follow. And we're going to hit copy object along vectors. And I want uh, about a dozen of them. Align objects to the curve and hit copy. And there's our circles. And let's check to see how far apart everything is here. We'll use our ruler and we'll measure from about here to here. So it's a little less than a quarter of an inch and here to here is uh, bigger than an eighth and less than a quarter, so I think that's fine. Now I want another row of circles. So I'm going to move this down into this circle area. We'll do the exact same thing. Select the circle and select the circle you want to follow. Now we're going to do half as many, six circles, copy, excuse me, and that looks fine. And then we'll put this one in the middle by hitting F9. Okay, and the only other change I want to make, we can get rid of these circles now because they are just for alignment purposes. Is I don't like how close these are together. So I'm going to select the six inner circles by holding the shift key. And I'm going to transform, move objects. And then if you grab one of these squares here, we can rotate those six. And I'm just eyeballing the distance between, you know, I want these circles in between these circles, basically. That seems about right. All right, that's all the vectors I need to draw. Now we need a tool path it. So for our, our machine to cut this out, we're going to pocket I'm going to use the same size bit. I could use a half inch bit here and make this a lot faster. 
but I want to pocket out this whole area here. Everything in between, everything inside this circle, basically, I want to pocket. I want it to be about 0.1 taken away from my quarter inch total thickness. So we're going to do a pocket. We're going to do, uh, we're going to ramp in just so it doesn't plunge right into the plastic. We'll call this pocket inside 0.25 bit. Calculate. I want everything in, everything that I'm cutting out to turn to black. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to preview. All right, so that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to pocket out the center first. Now I could profile all of these individually, but then I'm going to have a little center disc that's going to go flying. And I don't really want that. I don't want a bunch of little pieces. I don't want to have to worry about them jamming between the bit and the side. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select all these circles. I'm going to hit another pocketing toolpath, only this time we're going to go full depth, 0.25. Same bit. It's going to take two passes to get through it. Probably wouldn't, but uh, we'll say it will. Um, I still want to ramp in. And we're going to call this cut out circles. Same size bit, so I know. Calculate, preview. All right. So there's all my circles cut out, and all that waste will just go into the sucker and not go flying around the shop. And then these corners here, this is where I'm going to I'll drill a hole in my blank and screw it down to a piece of scrap wood so I can go through without any problem. Now we need to cut the part out. So, close this. We'll do a profiling tool path. We want to make sure that this is set to outside the circle. Full depth, quarter inch, two passes. I'm going to ramp in. And I don't want this thing to go flying, so I'm also going to add some tabs. And click Add Tabs. About three eighths of an inch, about, two, that's pretty thick. About sixteenth thick, three eighths long. Four of them should be good. I'll hit add tabs. There's four. You can move these around if you don't like where they are. Close that. Then we'll call this cut out and guard. Point two five. So we're using the same bit for all three tool paths. Now let's look at that. There we go. That should work. Now this is the inside of the part. The part you won't see. This will be the outside that's going to be all flat. And I'll probably use a round over bit after I cut off these tabs and sand them smooth like a little eighth inch round over bit or something. But we'll have to see. We're going to have to see how this fits. If we need to tweak it, I might make it out of plywood first just to see how it works. My intention is to use plastic. Uh, but uh, now all we got to do is save it and give it a shot. So we'll close this. We'll hit uh, Save Toolpaths. Since we've used the same bit, we can output all the toolpaths 
at once. And the first thing I want to do is pocket. Then I want to cut out my circles. And then I want to cut out the part. You could do circles, pocket, and then cut out the part, but uh, I don't think it matters too much. There'll be less circling, you know, if I could do rest machining or something so it would know that the first pocket is done, that would be okay too. Anyways, uh, save, save it to the desktop. I'm going to call it Vanguard. Now it's saved. Saved to my desktop here. There you are. So I'll copy that to a thumb drive, take it to the machine, and uh, we'll start part two of this process.